Welcome back to this third tutorial on setting up an FPS weapon management system. I'm Isaac from Chef Games, and today we are going to be setting up a quick and dirty HUD to keep track of our ammo and the weapons that we currently have in our possession. And then we are going to set up our shoot and our reload functions. If you're finding this tutorial series helpful, please do remember to like and subscribe. But other than that, let's get to it. Uh, you're also going to see uh, the change weapon function be a little bit different in this particular tutorial. Just ignore that and keep the code that you have from the previous tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we're going to add some functions. We're going to add function shoot, and I'll just put a pass here, and we're going to add function reload, and I will put a pass there as well. Uh, if you remember from our last tutorial, we set up the inputs for these. So we want if event is action pressed, shoot, we're going to shoot. And if event dot is action pressed, reload, we're going to reload. So if you haven't got those inputs, you just go project, project settings, and under the input map, just type shoot in there and hit add. And I'm going to put that under the left mouse button. Then I'll add the reload. So just press add and hit that little plus button. And I'm going to put mine to R. Okay, so I'm just going to put in these animations. So I'm going to call the animation player dot play. And I'm going to pass in the current weapon dot shoot underscore anim. Uh, if you guys remember, we've got these resources with the animation stored there as variables. So my variable is shoot and nim. If you don't have that, just pass in whatever animation you want to play. Same exact function below there, animation.play, uh, current weapon dot reload, and we'll hit play there. And you can see immediately that the gun is playing that shoot animation. And when you press R, it is reloading, which is exactly what we want. So everything's working. If it's not working, check your animation variables. I am going to set up a HUD so that we can, you know, keep track of what we're doing. So I'm going to create a bunch of signals here. Signal one is weapon changed. Signal two is update the ammo. And signal three is update the weapon stack. Um, I'm going to need to create a canvas layer here. I'm going to drop that up below the parent node. We'll add a couple of V boxes. And but right below that, we'll add H boxes. And then we'll need two labels. Now, that first label is just going to be the name of the particular field we're keeping track of. So I'm not going to worry about renaming it. But the second one here, I am going to rename to current weapon. And in that top label there, I'll just type the text current weapon. I'll duplicate that. Yeah, let's rename this field to be ammo with a colon and then a space and then rename this actual label here below it with nothing in it to current ammo. Same thing again here. Let's retype the text in to be weapon stack and rename that label below it to be weapon stack. And we'll create a new script on the canvas layer in the tutorial folder. That's fine. We're going to call mine HUD. And we're going to add all three of these nodes. So at on ready var, we've got current weapon, current weapon label equals, and I'm just going to drag that in. You'll see, you'll see the new show up on this. So I didn't notice this when I was doing it. So I'm going to have to fix that later. We've got on ready var, current weapon, current ammo label and drag that across again. I have the same problem with the new, just ignore that. Delete it if it happens to you too. And at on ready var current weapon stack and drag that node in as well. Okay, so now let's connect up those three signals that we created. We'll double click those and click the canvas layer. Okay, so now we have all three signals here. We are going to type some variables here. We want the weapon name on weapons manager weapon changed. And the function we're going to call is current weapon label dot set underscore text. And we'll just pass in the weapon name. Okay, so for the update weapon stack, we're going to do something a little bit different. We will pass in the weapon stack and we will type current weapon stack dot set text. And we'll actually pass in nothing so that it gets cleared out. And for I in weapon stack, because it's going to be an array, 
will be current weapon stack dot text plus equals and then we'll put in a new line and we'll add in i which will just be the name of the weapon and for the update ammo i'm going to do current ammo label dot set text and i've got some brackets here str is the function to change an integer to a string i'm going to pass in ammo i almost forgot that and that's going to be an array as well so i'll type ammo square brackets zero i'll add a slash and then I'll do plus str ammo square brackets one. So that will be our current ammo and our reserve ammo. And make sure you get your brackets right here. It can be a bit confusing when you're adding all these functions. Okay, so we'll come back over to the weapon stack and we need to actually admit these signals. So on initialize, we want to update the weapon stack and we need to pass the weapon stack to the HUD. And when we enter, we are going to emit the signal weapon changed with the current weapon dot weapon underscore name and we'll also need to update the ammo because we've changed weapons and that will need to be an array current weapon dot current ammo comma current weapon dot reserve ammo okay so here they are these two variables in my resource if you're not using these resources then you'll just need to pass in whatever variable you're using uh, obviously this is going to crash because of those new functions that appeared when i started dragging these in i'm just going to remove them delete them out and rerun the game and there we go we can see it says blaster d ammo 30 of 60 and the weapon stack which is the two weapons we have in our possession Blaster D and Blaster N. And when I change, the IMO is updated and the weapon name is updated. Okay, so now we can start setting up the math for the shoot and reload. We're gonna to come to the shoot function and we'll just add our first condition. We're gonna type if current weapon dot current ammo is not equal to zero, colon, and then we'll drop down and we're actually gonna add a second condition after this. We could, of course, do this in one, but I prefer, or I feel like it's more readable to have it as two in this instance. Uh, you guys can do whatever you like. I'm gonna type if at not animation player is playing. So we don't want to shoot when the animation player is already playing. Um, in other words, we can't interrupt an animation to shoot. So this will also enforce the fire rate set by the animation. Um, and then I'll have my animation player dot play. And we'll also need to reduce our ammo. So we'll have current weapon dot current ammo minus equals one, and we'll emit this signal update ammo. And I'm just gonna come back up to the enter function and just copy that in because it is quite long. Alrighty, so let's hit that play. And you can see, that now our ammo is reducing and our animation player is playing. When we reach zero, nothing happens. The other thing we might want to set up is auto fire. Come to the signal for the animation player, animation finished. And I'm going to type if anim name is equal to current weapon dot shoot anim and current weapon dot auto fire. So you remember in our resources, we have an auto fire variable. Make sure that's equal to true. And then we're going to check if input dot is action pressed and that shoot. And then if that's true, we're also we're going to play the shoot animation. As the animation finishes, if the auto fire is set to true, we'll run the function again. So as you can see, that's working. As I hold down the fire button, that animation for the blaster D is playing on repeat. Okay, so now what do we do if we run out of ammo? We need to reload. So I'm going to type else reload and i'll come down to reload okay right now we're just playing the animation so we need to do a few more things let's have a look we've got reserve ammo we've got magazine and those are the two variables that i'm going to be playing with in my resource so i'm going to check if current weapon dot current ammo is equal to current weapon dot magazine that is to say that we don't need any ammo i'm just going to return out of this nothing's going to happen if you have full ammo and then I'm gonna check that if the animation player is not playing, I don't wanna do this if we're in the middle of something, I can't interrupt to reload. And that's mostly a design choice, it doesn't have to be that way. And then I'm also gonna have another 
condition after this, and it's going to be if current weapon dot reserve ammo is not equal to zero. We can't reload if we don't have any ammo, and then I will reload. Okay, so that's all the conditions that we need. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. We're going to type var reload amount is equal to, and we'll use the min again. I'm going to make this a little wider because it's going to be pretty long. I type min, and this can take any number of variables. So we're going to type all of them here. So it's going to be current weapon dot magazine minus current weapon dot current ammo. So think of that as if we have a magazine of 10 and we currently have three in our current ammo, the number there would be seven, which is the amount of ammo we need to fill up our current ammo to our magazine level. Okay, the next one is going to be the current weapon dot magazine, which would be in my example before, 10. And the third one will be current weapon dot reserve ammo. So it's going to be the smaller of these three numbers. In most circumstances, it's either going to be the lesser of those three. So if you don't have enough ammo to top your current ammo up to full, then you're going to just take the reserve ammo amount. If you are at zero, then you know, current weapon dot magazine minus current weapon dot current ammo might be the same as current weapon dot magazine now that I think about it. So you could probably just do the two. Either way, it's always going to take the lesser of those three situations. Anyway, okay, so what we want to do with this is we're going to type current weapon dot current ammo and I'm going to go equals current weapon dot current ammo. I like this to be written out here just so it's clear what I'm doing. Current weapon dot current ammo plus reload amount and current weapon dot reserve ammo equals current weapon dot reserve ammo minus reload amount. Okay, and lastly, we want to emit that signal for update ammo. And the else condition will be else we will want to play the current weapon dot out of ammo animation. So that's the animation I have stored in my out of animation variable in my resource. Okay, so let's test this out. I'm just going to empty the clip on this one and it should reload 30 and my reserve animo is 30. And I'm just going to do a couple of different tests to make sure we're happy with the number that's always coming out. So 25, I need five, yep. Okay, I need 10, yep. Okay, that makes sense. And I'll reduce it all the way down to 10. I should go up to 20 and I do. And now I don't have any ammo. What happens? Then the out of animation animation plays and same when I get to the end. I'll test this one out too just to make sure and it looks like it's reloading normally. Okay so that is how you set up the reload, the shoot and reload animations and all the math that goes along with tracking the ammo. Uh, the next one we're going to be looking at the hit scan. So we're going to actually start to be able to shoot our gun, I guess you would say, I'm going to be able to deal damage. Um, one last thing that I wanted to do before I left this one was just add a sight because we don't have one, so you don't really know where you're shooting. So I'm going to hit that plus and add a texture rect to the canvas layer. And I'm just going to call that main site. And I've got something in the models under HUD assets called Crosshair One. I am going to click the little anchor up the top when I have the main site selected and select a full rect and drag that texture over to the texture slot on this texture rect. You'll notice that it's very stretched. What we want to do is change the stretch mode to keep centered and just make sure that anchor is selected. And now you'll see when I run, it is in the center. Okay, so that is how you set up the shoot and reload in Godot. That's just the animation and a, you know, a quick and dirty little HUD to keep track of it all. Okay guys, that is everything I have to show you today. We have made a quick and dirty little HUD that can help us keep track of our ammo and what guns we currently have in our possession. And we also have the beginnings of our shoot and reload. Next week, we are going to start implementing our hit scan function, which is really exciting. That's when we're gonna to start to see our ability to actually shoot things 
I have recently launched my Patreon, patreon.com slash chef games. If you're jumping on there, you will get access to these videos in advance. So we are currently up to setting up our projectile weapons and possibly even further. I'm not too sure I do record these in advance, but if you jump over to that, you can get there quicker. Either way though, I will see you next week. Please remember to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I'm Isaac from Shaft Games and I'll see you next week.